So I thought I'd go for 1080p on this one. See what you guys thought of the slightly prettier image. Wanted to show off my nice new t-shirt for my club. Cool, huh? Printed that all myself. Yeah, be impressed. This video is basically a callback to one of my older videos where I talked about the top five most realistic sword fighting games. And I kind of wanted to amend that list because after I put it out, people, you know, this is the internet. So it got stormed with people all going, you forgot about this one, you forgot about this one. And to be fair, they were right. I missed out on a lot of games that are on Steam that I just hadn't realized existed. So I'm going to cover those games because these definitely deserve a mention. You know, they shouldn't be overlooked just because I'm an idiot. That's not fair. So the first one I want to talk about is a game called Exanima, which I think is kind of like a smaller version of a big game that the developers are working on at the minute. And it's a good game, but personally, the mi right, so the minute you boot the game up, it warns you about the fact that it's going to be difficult to play, you're not going to be used to c the controls, and, and the enjoyment is kind of in the depth of understanding how to use it properly. I kind of didn't. I found the fighting extremely difficult. I got lost a ton of times and I'm not that good at games to be honest. Some video games I even have to turn down to easy mode just so I can keep enjoying them. Why am I telling people that? Why am I telling people on the internet that? They're gonna kill me. So I didn't enjoy it as much as I would have liked to, but it's got an interesting combat system. You kind of swing the weapon around um, and have to, at least this is how I experienced it, and again, I didn't really understand the controls that much, but for me, it was a lot about distance. Uh, I had to aim my attacks properly, but I had to always make sure that I was within range. Um, kind of, the, the guy that you're playing at really moves around like he's incredibly drunk, you know, probably again because I'm playing it badly, but you kind of stumble around try in and out of range trying to, trying to swing your sword. It's not skilled fighting, they're not doing much in terms of actual attacks, rather it's just wildly swinging, but it's all possible, everything you see in the game is really possible and it's got a really interesting take on how to do sword fighting in a game like this. For me, getting over that skill level was just too difficult and I ended up dying all the time and rolling around like a drunk idiot. Oh, well, okay. All right, all right, well. Another game a lot of people told me about was one called Of Kings and Men. To be honest, Something about this, I'm, I'm kind of weird about video games. Some things just appeal to me and some things just don't. I'm really kind of shallow in terms of assessing games. I'll see pictures or promotional artwork and it'll just either right away be a yes or a no. And I kind of find it hard to get over that. A lot of the time when I, when I do get over it, I discover some of the best games ever. It's tough for me if I don't like the way a game looked and I didn't really like the way this one looked so I didn't spend much time checking it out. But if you're interested in games like Mountain Blade, this one might be for you guys. Now my previous list, I've actually got it written down here, For Honor, Chivalry, Mountain Blade, Bushido Blade, and Kingdom Come Deliverance. And I still think that Kingdom Come Deliverance is the best game attempting to do this. Another game that a lot of people pointed me in the direction of was a title called Maud How. I'm probably absolutely embarrassing myself with the pronunciation, but I think it means the murder strike. My 15th century German is not so good. You know, my, my German is not so good. My, my English is, is not so good. To me, the game looks an awful lot like chivalry, only maybe it's got a little bit more finesse in the techniques, a little bit more actually going on beneath the surface. It uh, looks really interesting, it's a very attractive looking game. In terms of realism, it's a competitive game, so there's a lot of telegraphing. Damn fucking alarm. 
I don't know if it has a single player element. I didn't actually check. I probably should have. Oh yeah, best research show on YouTube, by the way, guys. Night Squire. It's direction-based combat, and I like that mechanic in sword games. It makes sense. It's silly to be able to block an attack that's coming from above when your sword's all the way down here. It's a great way of making sword fighting easily understandable because it's kind of intrinsic. If a sword attack's coming from up there, defend up there. So you don't really have to understand the depths of swordsmanship to, to understand some of the most obvious principles of it. I also really liked that in their promotional video they mentioned not having their fights look like ballet. Fights that look like fights and not ballet auditions. Which I'm a big fan of if you haven't noticed. That's three more games that you guys can go and check out that are all about sword fighting. I might make a video soon where I talk about swords in games that aren't realistic at all, just, just sword fighting games that I love that I think are badass, because some of my favourite games have got sword fighting in that, that isn't at all realistic, and I don't care, they're great games too. So if you want more game related content, let me know in the comments down below. Check these games out, at least the ones that are out. I just remembered, like, I think Mordhau's not even out.